Hey everyone, my name is Chloe, and today I'm here to start my Tis the Seasonathon reading vlog. So, in true vlog st style, I am here in terrible lighting. Um, it is dark outside. It's like 5:35. Jeremy's got the big girls at tennis, and I'm sitting here with Etta, and I'm kind of like nap trapped because I have a broken ankle, and so I can't really move her. I, I mean, I can't because I am non weight bearing, so I can't get up and walk. Um, with her so when this situation comes and he's gone and she's on the couch I'm on the couch so um what better thing to do than to start reading so um I am reading the Christmas box by Richard Paul Evans and I have read this book this year already um it's a very short 125 page novella there's three of them in this series um, the Christmas box, timepiece, and the letter. And I listened to the Christmas box on audio, and I didn't really care for it. It was fine. It was just fine. It was a fine little story about that, like, reflected God's love for us through an example. Um, but it was fine, ultimately really forgettable. Now, I have really liked Richard Paul Evans before, especially his Christmas stuff. And so I thought, I'm going to give this a try physically and see if I feel different. If maybe it makes more of an impact reading it physically than it did on audio. I don't know. And so I'm, uh, let's see, about halfway through. And maybe not quite. But I'm just thinking of something so funny. Because it's about this couple they are they have like a four-year-old daughter or something and they see this ad that is saying um there's this older lady that basically needs like a companion she wants somebody to cook and do light cleaning and that kind of stuff but basically what she's looking for is a living companion and so they apply and they get the job and so they move in with this old lady and i think it's my thriller brain that is like watch out for this old lady, something sinister is going to happen. And like, this is so not like that. Like, this is a very sweet Christian fiction, Christmassy read. Not at all like something sinister, but like, because I've read so many thrillers and because I like thrillers, I'm like, just kind of waiting. And I didn't get that tension when I listened to it on audio. So, um, however, I am still kind of just meh about it. Like, if I, when I set this down, I'm not not that eager to pick it back up. I definitely won't be staying up late tonight to read this. Like, it's just kind of okay. So, I don't know. If you guys, I when I hauled this, some of you have said you really like the series. So, is the first book the best, the worst, somewhere in the middle? Um, let me know. I still have, like, two-thirds of it left. So, I'm not, not writing it off. But I'm interested um, in the differences that I'm seeing. So, that is where I'm at. So we'll see you hopefully from a slightly more like presentable place um, next time. But if not, here we are. Welcome to the vlog. Hey everyone. So this is like the vlog of all vlogs. This is just real life, messy, messy real life. But um, so I finished the Christmas box and I think it was just okay. I mean, the thrillery bit of it. I mean, obviously I got over that, but like I feel like this was kind of like, hey, I need to throw in something uber emotional that will make everybody universally upset. So here's what I'm going to do. And um, I mean, so yeah, it's a sad scene. But like, I didn't really care about the characters because it was so short. And like, there just wasn't enough development of the relationship or of the individuals. We should make this like a drinking game. So at every cut I make, what toy is missing? <laughs> Um, I'm home alone with the big girls because I can't drive because of my broken ankle. And so um, my husband took our baby to um, an appointment. And so I'm home with the big girls. And it's just full-on brawls. Two, two and four, they are they are a lot. But um, anyway, so it was fine. I don't feel the emotional connection that everybody else did. And so I would say it's maybe a three stars. I'm like not in the mood at all to read the other two in the book, in the book. Um, and maybe it's my mood. Like maybe I'm just in a hard hardened mood because life is so heavy, um, that I don't want like the cheap emotional pe like jabs, but, or not jabs, but you know what I'm saying? Um, I just didn't really care about that one. So, yeah, it's a really emotional story about, um, or it's supposed to be a real, it's got a really emotional scene in a story about um, the love of a parent, basically, and how much God must love us if he gave us his son. So, there's that. Um, then I read It Happened One Christmas Eve by Jim McKinley, and um, this is cute. And so, it is number three in the, like, Museum of Literature series or something. I have not read one and two, and this is a novella. 
And, like, I thought it could be a standalone novella, and I think it can, but I definitely felt like I was missing some stuff. Like, not not even missing some stuff, just, like, there's a, emotional depth that comes with reading the first two books that you don't necessarily get. But um, this woman, she works in this museum of literature that her family ma- ma- majority funds. And so um, her mom is saying, like, hey, if you don't settle down with this guy who's she's dating, and he's fine, but he's, like, no more than fine. He's very just meh. Um, she's like, if you don't settle down with him, then I'm going to pull funding. You're going to lose your job, all these things. And she is just not wanting to do that. So at her engagement party, she jilts him. And she runs off with Santa. And um, her and Santa, ha- like, have a kind of um, a, kind of a bantery relationship that was cute. And I really liked watching their relationship develop, even in a short period of time. I thought it was really good. So, um, probably three and a half stars. I really enjoyed it for what it was. It's just novellas are hard for me. Romance is kind of hard for me. But overall, I think this was done really well. And I would go back and read the rest of the series. I'm really curious what you guys can hear in the background, if anything. (laughs) There is screaming. I should probably know. But um, that's just been kind of like our method of communication, especially my four-year-old lately, has been screaming. And it's just driving me insane. But And nobody napped today, so that's great. It's just great. But then um, I also read for this vlog. So what do those prompts fulfill? So Christmas Box is... um, Let's see, under 250 pages, maybe? Um, I'm going to pull this up because otherwise I'm going to tell you guys all wrong and I'm not going to know. So the Christmas box is under under 250 pages. Um, The, let's see, snow on the cover is, um, it happened on Christmas Eve. And then I also read The Getaway by Emily March, which is a book that I got as a gift from the publishers. And this one I did not think was set in the holidays, but it is. And I loved part of this, but, like, had a hard time with part of it. So this is about this mom who is um, a mom to four adult kids, I think. And she just lives her life for these kids. I can't remember. I think her husband died. Um I'm pretty sure he died. And anyway, she lives her life for her kids, and her kids won't stop fighting, you guys. And so, like, I totally was like, boom, I get this. If my kids are still doing this in 20 years, I'm going to feel the exact same way of, like, you guys need to just chill and, like, realize that you guys are family and, you know, all of that kind of stuff. And so she... Um, is really frustrated with her family and like it's Thanksgiving and she's got two boys and two girls and her boys are not coming one of her girls is not coming and she like is this lady that goes out like pulls all, all the stops for the holidays which I also am traditionally that person however this year is not um but anyway so all of that to say I really understood where she was coming from and like Also, we get the story of one of her sons, primarily. And the thing I had a hard time with is that this mom, like, goes a little too far. So she moves to um, Colorado to, like, renovate this lodge or whatever. And um, wants, like, refuses to let her kids come visit. Wants, like, multiple months breaks from her kids. And, like almost makes it all about her where I'm like okay that's that's not really what being a parent is and I can totally understand being really frustrated with all the fighting and like the immaturity it because it all of that is because the grandfather died and left money that they don't agree how to deal with it and so um it's it's a squabble and I understand being super frustrated about it but the way she reacted was really immature and kind of selfish in my opinion so I kind of lost favor with her but um so it's her story as she's renovating this lodge with her sister as well as her oldest son um he comes into town for some reasons and so I thought it was really cute there are definitely um a couple romance lines going in uh, like throughout this book but I would say it's more women's fiction and I know like the note from the author said like this is a women's fiction novel or it was intended to be a women's fiction novel so whatever that means to you I don't know but um it's definitely got romance weaved throughout but it's not primarily a romance I would say it's about this woman kind of coming to terms with her family and her family kind of realizing um what it means to be family and like what matters and what doesn't and so I liked it um I thought it was good the end felt kind of abrupt for me so there's that um so now I am taking a break from from this vlog for 
just like a day or two because I have two days of vlogmas left to, um, to do, uh, left to do, and so um, I'm gonna try to get one of those days done, and then I'm gonna read the holiday Holly dates by Brittany Cherry. And now the reason I'm doing this, it's currently Thursday. This readathon I think goes through Saturday or Sunday. I'm not sure exactly which, um, but the reason I'm doing this is because. Yes, I need to get through those Vlogmas books. And two, um, the Holly Dates one counts as um, set in December, which Chris, what, it happened on Christmas Eve is obviously set in December. Um, the Getaway also has some scenes in December, and even the Christmas box is in December. So if I need to be done, I'm done. Um, I'm not going to make a haul, I'm not going to vlog making a holiday treat because you guys, vlogging is just a nightmare. It's just a nightmare around my house. Like, not that I, like, vlogging is not a nightmare. But, like, I'm not ready to let you, this is enough of my mess to let you guys see. Like, I'm just not ready to let you guys see that. Or try to, try to coordinate my scooter or my crutches. My two kids who are obsessed with helping, which is great. I love it. Um, you know, if you're a mom, you know how much you love it. And also vlogging. So, I don't think I'm going to get that done. But, um... Yeah, I hope to read one more book. So I will let you know what I think of this Brittany Cherry book. Hey everyone, so Tis the Season of Thon is over and I made it like really, I was going to say just in the nick of time, but really I was probably like an hour late. Um, but I am here sitting by the fire today because it is freezing and I just had to be out at physical therapy and so I'm cold and cannot get warm. So sorry for the lighting, sorry for all the things, but I'm sitting by a fire. So um, Last night, I finished The Holiday, Holly Dates by Brittany Cherry, and I liked it. It was a four-star, so it's got a lot of tropes that um, I think you'll like. If you like the book, or if you like the trope, you'll like the book, because at first, it's kind of enemies to lovers. They are neighbors, and they meet, and um, he, she runs into him, literally, and then she goes down to, like, the local bar, and she is so frustrated when she finds out that he is the owner of the bar. She's like, I wanted this to be my Cheers, which I, I have watched every single episode of Cheers and love it and, like, totally get what she was wanting out of that. And so um, she's wanting to be where everybody knows her name. And now she's like, I've got to avoid this place because I don't like you. But she, they become friends, and she starts taking her dates there. And he's, like, even trying to, like, hook her up. Um and nothing is working out right and he's getting frustrated because he sees that nobody is treating her the way she deserves to be treated and then it comes to holiday time and you guys hurricane annie strikes strikes again but um it comes to holiday time and she needs somebody to come home with her and pretend to be her boyfriend so he does and it's just really sweet really cute um i wish there were less steamy times but i knew going into it that they would probably be there so that's a me thing not a book thing um and i just skimmed over them and it was fine so um yeah i i enjoyed it i think she did a good job she does holiday romances really well so that is it for tis the season of thon let me know if you participated let me know what your favorite book was that you read or just what your favorite holiday book has been and that's it we'll see you in the next one thank you so much for watching <laughs>